enjoy as we play some solitaire. No, Klondike Solitaire, also known as Canfield, is a card game that is played by typically one player and is also known as the game Patience. It's a game that's been around for quite a while and in fact it gets its name Klondike after the Canadian region where the Klondike Gold Rush happened in 1896 to 1899. Tonight we're going to go over all the rules of the game, how to play, how to set it up, and some basic strategy. However, in 1913, the so-called official rules of the game, Seven Card Klondike, has become Klondike with the modification that the pack is run through one of card at a time instead of three. But tonight we're going to be going over three card draw Klondike Solidaire. So, how is the game Klondike Solidaire played? Well, what you need to play the game, and most importantly, is a deck of cards deck of playing cards will do perfectly fine, as long as the deck has all 52 cards, which means we do not need or require the jokers. So if your deck comes with any jokers, you need to remove them as they are no longer required. We just need to make sure we have all four suits with 13 cards, ace through king, making 52 cards in our deck of cards. Now to play the game of Solidaire, it's very simple. We take our deck of cards and we begin by giving it a shuffle. The better the shuffle, the more the game is likely to be challenging. So if your deck is in new deck order, be sure to give it a very good shuffle. Giving it all kinds of shuffles, or cuts if you will. Just make sure you do not know the order of the cards, and that the deck is face down at the beginning of play. Now, the aim of the game is to get the deck and separate it into its four suits. Clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. And we want the suits to go ace all the way up to king, face upwards. So ace, two, three, four, five, all the way up to king of every single suit. However, as you can imagine, it's not as simple as just going through finding an ace and then going and finding the two of diamonds and so on and so forth until we have that entire suit done. It's a little bit more challenging and that is because there are some restrictions and some rules that we must abide by to play the game and it all begins with setting up the game. So let's get into how to set up Klondike Solidaire. So, to set up the game, it's very useful to have a good amount of room to play this game, so it can be difficult to play it if you don't have a desk or a table or a surface to play this on. Uh, that's why sometimes the online version of Solidaire can be a lot easier, because you can play it just on your phone or your tablet or your laptop without requiring too much room, but I always feel the game's more fun with a deck of cards, playing it physically with room, and it's a great way to pass the time, hence the name Patience. You must have a lot of patience to play this game as well. So to set up the game, we begin by making seven piles, horizontally, and each pile must have one more card than the previous pile to the left. So pile number one has one card, pile 
2 has 2 cards, 3 has 3, 4 has 4, and so on, up to pile 7, having 7 cards. So let's do that. Pile 1 has 1 card, pile 2 has 2 cards, 3, 4, what's 1, 2, 3, now I've shuffled the deck, so I have no clue what these cards are. And it's quite useful to set up the cards in such a way like this, where you can sort of see a little bit of the card above it, just so you know how many cards are in each pile. Because, well, spoiler alert, as the game goes on, it's not always going to remain that there's going to be six cards in pile six. It may vary at time to time. So this is about seven, it's four, five, six, seven, and you can see it's definitely starting to take up a lot of room now. We'll set the remaining cards over here. The remaining cards over here should be, if you've done this correctly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight. 24 cards remaining, so double check you've done it right. Now the last step to setting up this game is you want the bottommost card, or the topmost card if you will, of each pile to be face up. So for pile 1 that's the only card, pile 2 that's this card here, these are a bit slidey these cards, <laughs> pile 3 about four, five, six, and seven, like so. Okay, so for this next little part of the video, we are going to be going over how to play the game exactly. Because as you know, we already know the rules. We need to try and separate these cards into their piles of their suits, ace through king, but how do we do that? Well, there are actually four extra imaginary piles, and they are up the top here. We have imaginary pile number one, imaginary pile number two, imaginary pile number three, and imaginary pile number four, and these piles are known as the foundations. This pile here is for clubs, this pile here is for hearts, this pile here is for spades, and this pile here is for diamonds. We can only put cards of that suit in that pile. We can't put a heart in the clubs pile or a club in the diamonds pile. And we can only put a card in their foundation pile, which is what we need to do, remember. If it is the lowest, most possible card that can go up there. So ace is lowest, king is highest. Now, in order to move the cards up, we can play about with these cards here, manipulate them a little bit. And we can move these cards from one pile to another. That's the whole point of the game. We can move an eight to another pile, a seven, to another pile, a king, to another pile, but only to one of these seven piles. There's no extra piles. That's all the piles. Now there's a couple more conditions that apply. We can only move a card to another pile if it is able to do so. Now what makes it able to do so, you ask? Well, we can put a card on a pile if it is lower than the value of the card it is going on top of. So for example, this 8 in pile number 1 can go on top of this 9 because it is lower than 9. It goes 9, 8. We couldn't put the 2 on the 9 because it must be an 8. It must be the card before it. Now, the 
other thing that matters is that the card must be of the opposite color of the card it's going on. So I can put a black 8 on this red 9 because it's the opposite color and it's the card before a 9. Does that make sense? For example, I couldn't put this 8 on the 7 because it's higher than a 7 despite it being of the opposite color. So this here is a valid move. So before we do anything, we look about all the cards. Now the only cards we can move are the bottommost card of each pile. So now that I've done that, I can't take this 9 back out and put it somewhere else. I'm not allowed to do that. It is now stuck behind the 8. I am, however, allowed to move this 8 if I would like to. But of course, I can only move it if I'm able to. Now, one thing you may have noticed is now that I've moved this 8, this pile is empty. What does that mean? This pile is now allowed to be used and freed up for more cards. But the only card that can go in an empty pile is the highest possible card there is, which is, of course, a king. So, we have a king that we can move. We can move either. It's completely up to us. Let's just go with this king. And we'll put it into pile one. So I couldn't put this two over there because it's not a king. Does that make sense? Okay. Now you may also notice something else. This pile number six. There's no card face up on the bottom. If you're ever in that situation, turn the card over. Now, unfortunately for me, I have another king. That's not very a good thing, but especially when you have three kings. But we'll ignore that. So, take a look at our situation with the information I've given you so far. Can you see any other moves I can do? I'll give you a clue. There is a move. Are you still struggling? I'll give you another clue. It's to do with this 7. That's right. We can pop this 7 on the 8. Why? Because it is lower than an 8. 9, 8, 7. And... It's of the opposite color. It doesn't matter if it's a diamond or a heart. As long as it's red, it can go on a black card. Great. Now we have a face down card. We know what we do with them. We turn them up. Now, I know this may look silly because this is a jack on an empty pile. That's fine because we turned it over. I wouldn't be allowed to move a jack over there. But now I'm allowed to use these as their new piles. Now there is one more thing that we can do. And it's a very sneaky move. Remember what we said about the foundations. We have the clubs pile up here. If we have a club that is an ace, we can put it up to the top. Because it is the lowest card. Does that make sense? And it's on the bottom of the pile. If this ace was, for example, one card up, which it never will be, we wouldn't be able to do it. Now that we've moved the ace up, we'll turn over this card. And there's actually another move we can do. We can move this two up to the ace and pop it on top. And you can see we're starting to build up that clubs pile now. Now the good thing about building the foundations is that's us starting to complete the clubs pile. That's one of four suits, remember. Now we need to put a three of clubs on top of this so we can only move a card up to the clubs pile now if it's a three of clubs and if it's on the bottom of the pile. So if this is a three right here, 
Ace of Spades. Let's put that up the top. No, unfortunately we don't have any twos. I think earlier we had a two though, did we? Yeah, that was at the start, but it's going to be tricky to get back round to that. So there's nothing. Well, there is a free pile now. Remember what we moved of free piles. Kings. So we put the king over. Flip the card below it. And we have a red eight. So can we move that to a black nine? We don't have one. Do we have any black sevens? No. So we go back to our packet. Three cards. Red queen. That's very good. It can go on top of either king. Doesn't make a difference because we have another red queen. So this is a good, good game so far. You can see why the jokers are not involved now because, well, where would they go? I believe sometimes people do play with jokers and use them as sort of wild cards, but we'll ignore that. So looking at the screen now, do you see any moves? No. Well, there is a move. So try again if you thought no. This seven, exactly. Now there is one final rule that I do want to show you. But I'm waiting to see if we get the opportunity to show you. If we don't, I will show you by cheating, but uh, can we move the 10? No. So we'll deal the cards. Black 6. We don't have a red 7. So no. Black 7. No. And then the final one. A black 5. No. Okay. So if you get to the end of your packet, then there's no moves you can do. You pick it up, flip it over, and you do it again. Now I know what you're thinking. How are we going to get something different this time? Well, if you think about it, because you removed cards the first time, you're not going to get the same cards again. You'll get something different. So we're really hoping we can get something we can move up here. So let's give this a go. Jack. Nope. Is that three? Yeah, that's three. Seven. Nope. Ten. Unfortunately, nope. Six. Again, unfortunately, nope. Seven. Nope. And five. Nope. So unfortunately for us, if we get to the point where there are no cards we can move up, and nothing we can put to the foundations. We have lost. And that is how you lose the game. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to cheat. So, let's suppose we had a 10 on top of this jack. Like this. There is one final type of move that you can do to help you out. Think about it very carefully. What card goes on top of a 10? A black 10, that is. A red 9. Now, we have a red 9, but the issue is it's not on the bottom, so we can't move it. But we can. We can move it, but we must move all other cards below it. Like this. So, they all must come with it. And that frees up a new card for us. In this case, it's a red 8. So that is the other way you're allowed to move. Now, once again, let's go through this pack. I did give it a bit of a shuffle to see if there's any other moves we can do. Although typically, you don't shuffle this pack. I've just done it to allow us to keep progressing with this example game. So we put the 4 up. We can move this three across because it's one lower. You can flip this on over. And as you can see, things are starting to fall into play now with this game, the jack over there. We don't have a fourth king though. But we do have this black 
seven that can go here. We have another jack. Now we can sort of see in this position it would be nice to maybe get a black nine. But in order to do that, we need a red ten first. So can we get one? Let's have a look. Hopefully I'm not missing any moves either. Uh, four of hearts. Red ten, there we go. Okay. So all we need now is a black nine. There's a six. We can pop that there. Now there is a move we can do. Do you see it? We can put this pile over here. No, that's right. Flip that over. Three of diamonds. Unfortunately for us, we still haven't really been able to move any cards up to the top. So, at the moment, we're still a bit stagnant. Now, one thing I do want to let you know is you can move cards back down if you want to. So, I can put this two back down here. But you can only move it if it's the topmost card. So, if this is here, I can't move the ace. I must move the two first. Now, you're probably thinking, why would you want to do this? Well, you can do this to help you manipulate other cards. So, let's say I had a four of clubs up here. I could put the four over here and then move this three over there, freeing up another card. That can be quite useful sometimes. Anyways, last couple cards, we get a king. Turn them back over, go through again. The four of clubs, this time, very useful. Pop that there. Bring the three down. We almost have a complete pile here. If I wanted to complete it, I could move the two down. Doesn't really make a difference. Six can go on the seven. The five, that's right over there. And finally, we have another card we can put up to the foundations. Because it's one card higher than an ace. Now let's flip this on over. I always like to take a little look every so often. Do we have seven piles? We do. So there's nothing I'm missing. Except from the fact that we can put this three up the top now. Now I would like to move this four up. If possible. But I can't just yet. I need to get rid of this three first. Now I can only do that if I get the two of diamonds. Or if I get another black four somewhere because I'm allowed to move this three, because it's the bottom-most card. So let's see. Red four, so wrong one, but not bad. We can put this nine on the ten, and see now we can move one of these eight piles over. Let's go with that one. Okay, let's flip this over. Black four, the four of spades. So, like I said, we can take this three, put it there, and then put this four up to the top. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, it puts us one step closer to completing the clubs. And now, I can take this pile and pop it down there. I've kind of just freed up a card in doing so. Very useful. Flip that over, we get a queen. Flip this over, we get a black ten. We're still working with the seven. We can't put it anywhere, though. A black nine and a jack. Very lovely. There we go. So, let's take a look. Our final cards here. We have an eight. And we have a six. So unfortunately for us again, we have officially lost now. But I don't want us to lose. I want to show you what it looks like to win. So please don't do this. But once again, I'm going to try and cheat. Um, let's hypothetically say that this pile, instead of being there, was here. Okay. Just hypothetically. We could move the two over, but 
you're not allowed to do that usually. Don't worry though, I'm going to play an example game in a minute. An official game. The three, we can put up the top. And as you can see now, we are about to complete all the face down cards. And we have done so. And when you do that, that's typically a good sign that you've won. You can see four, five, three, three. I should probably deal my first three cards here just to see what we've got. Eight of clubs. So let's see, four of diamonds, five of clubs, um, four of spades. We also have the five of spades, uh, six of hearts, five of diamonds, six of diamonds, six of spades. Um, I believe this next card is the six of clubs, so I'll just do that. Seven of clubs. Uh, seven of hearts. Seven of spades. Eight of spades. Nine of spades. You can see it's actually quite fun, almost a little satisfying, if you will, moving all the cards up to the top. Now I'm a little bit of a pickle here because I can't move the diamonds until we get the seven of diamonds up. So how can I get that seven of diamonds? I need to move the ten of hearts up. So eight, nine, ten, then I can free up the seven. And now everything falls into place. We have all the nines. Ten of hearts. Ten of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. Jack of hearts. Queen of hearts. Uh, queen of spades. All the queens. And finally, all the kings. Now obviously you can see the kings are the last card you deal up. So that's why they go on the bottom at the sort of playing field when we play the game and there we go we have completed the game because we have separated the cards into their suits ace through king like so and that is us beaten klondike solidaire so i hope you guys enjoyed that that was a little sample game what i'm going to do now though is play one final game properly at a bit of a faster pace and as I play it, rather than teaching you how to play it, I'm going to be going over some tips and strategies that I use when playing the game as to maybe help you also win. So, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to start by giving the deck a really good shuffle. This is why it's very important if you've just played a game of Solidaire to give your game or your deck a good shuffle. That's my first tip. Give it a very good shuffle. Because you don't want it to be in a particular order to the point where you get like a two, three, four, and five all in a row of the same suit because then you would be out very quickly, wouldn't you? <laughs> now there are some unfortunate situations in which, uh, I mean, I don't think I've ever had it where there's nothing you can do with the setup or the pack. Usually there's always at least one move. So that should do there. Let's give it a little cut. And we'll set up the game now. Now because we know how to set up the game now, it's uh, going to be a lot easier for me to just sort of set it up quickly by turning the cards over as we go. So this is how I typically tend to set it up. I'll just turn the cards over as we go through them. Now as I set them up, I like to look at what I'm going to do. So I can already see I'm going to want to put that 9 on the 10. We've been quite lucky and got an ace. Um, it's unfortunate that's a red queen. But we've got a king, which is not so bad. We have a black jack on that red queen. It's going to be good. So this is pile 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. So like I said, typically there's always moves you can do. 
5 to 9 on the 10. Uh, also, I would highly recommend, once you've moved a card, if it's possible to move the card over, do it instantly. You don't want to, you know, move another card and leave cards face down when you could potentially use them. So, like, example here, I'm going to put this ace up immediately, just so I can move this king over. Free up another card, you see. Uh, now I can put this 10 on the jack. If you can get lots of moves done up here, that's usually a good sign. Seeing two of the same card is not a good sign, usually because it's quite rare that you're going to get two black fives. So, well, that would be both the black fives, wouldn't it? Is there anything we can do here? Always double and triple check. I'm very prone to missing moves and I always see comments saying things like, Dido, you should have done this, you should have done that. <laughs> it's easy to miss. But I think here there is nothing I can do. Remember that needs to be a black queen, so we'll deal the deck. Now one final thing I do want to say is there are other variations of solitaire. Variations in which people just deal one card at a time. Of course, this gives you a higher chance of winning. There's variations where people deal two cards at a time. But the typical variation is three card draw. It's the most, you know, sort of best balance between how many you win and how many you lose. It also makes it still very exciting when you do win. So seven. Nope. Blackjack. Oh, hang on a minute. I did miss something. I'm very, very sorry, everybody. I missed. I could do that. I didn't actually realize that was a jack because it was kind of covering it a little bit. That's why it's always good to make sure you can see the card above it. I'm very, very sorry. I probably already have about 50 comments pointing it out. Um, see, now... Oh, I thought we had a black six. No, we didn't. But now, if I'd moved this jack instead, I would have got a black queen, so maybe that would have been better, but... Anyways, let's continue. There's definitely nothing I can do now. Correct. Black queen. That can go up here. Four. No. So we deal three cards again. Now my next tip I'm going to give you is try your best to move cards up if you can. If there's cards sat down here that you can't move up, or you could move up, always move them up. Don't leave them down there in the hope that you can use them to help with other things. The more cards you get up there, the more cards you'll free up, because these piles are going to be the trickiest. And the last thing is that Obviously, the piles down this side have the most face-down cards, so if you can, try and free them up as quick as possible. If we have, for example, two fours, and let's say I have one face-down card behind this one, but three face-down cards behind this one, and I'm allowed to move one of the fours. Let's say there's a black five there. Oh, well, there is now. <laughs> Which one would I move? I would recommend going for the one that has fewer cards behind it. Because then it's more likely you'll be able to move this card and then free up a new pile. If that makes sense. Giving you a room for a king. More likely. So... In this case, it doesn't matter because there's no cards behind either. So I'll go with the four. I may be, if I'd had a diamond up here or a heart, ace, I maybe would have moved the opposite one to leave me a higher chance of moving the four up. Uh, is there anything I can do? No, because I don't have a king. So back to the deck we go. 
We have another six where we have abundance of red cards at the moment, don't we? I could really do with a red jack. Nope, black nine, but that's still good. Can go there. so much for watching. Sleep well, everybody.